الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ثم أما بعد Two kinds of people wish death The disbelievers when they see hellfire and when they are at the hellfire they wish that they are or they can die. They ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make them die. Surat Amma Wa yaqulu al-kafir Ya laytani kuntu turaba I wish that I am the dust, dirt. And who will be dirt the day of judgment? Animals. This is a wish to be like that. And in dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kafir are like animals. In fact, animals better than kafir. Yeah. The day of judgment, the kafir wishes he is an animal. That's number one. Wishes for death, disbelief. Number two, in this dunya, even a believer wishes for death especially at time of calamities. And the most calamity that good believer wishes for death is when the calamity is in the religion, where it's hard to practice your religion, or hard to live righteous. You would wish, or the believer wishes for death. And Prophet Muhammad Wasallam taught us that if you reach to that level, then instead of wishing to die, say, Allahumma in kanat al haya khayran li fa'ahyini wa in kanat al mawt khayran li fa'abidni. If life is good for me, keep me alive. And if death is good for me, make me die. Why? Because you might wish for death now, and you're not such a good person, and you end up in hell. Had you lived longer, you may have done some good deeds that erases the bad deeds, or repent, or change your haram status. And also you may be good now, and you have a certain level in Jannah, and if you live longer, you go higher in Jannah. So death can be negative and can be positive. And that is why you leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a believer to choose it for you. So we always have calamities and we are expected as believers we expect them. and when you have a calamity the best thing to do is to seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through what? Salah and Sabr Istainu bis sabr wa salah Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah heard the news or received the news when he was riding his animal that his son died, he stepped down, went to pray, to rak'ah, then the person told him, I'm telling you, your son died, and you're praying to rak'ah. He said, haven't you heard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَىٰ I have a calamity, it's not easy to deal with, my son died, part of me died, just like we said the companion when he saw his two sons becoming disbelievers and he wants them to be believers and they are refusing. He said, how can I, how can I see part of me go into hell and not do anything about it? <laughs> so he told him, I'm seeking help as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded me, salah and patience. So this is something that we need to always remember that death is not the solution. It's like one person commenting on death, he or she said, it is so true that dead people are not the one who feels the pain, it is living people. So I said, SubhanAllah, when was the last time you went to the grave and you tasted death to know that dead people don't feel the pain? See, sounds good. Because when we see someone dead, 
completely we figure he is in a better place. He's in rest. He is in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is a lot better than where he was. He is resting in peace. Look at those good words and look at how Prophet Muhammad tells us about death, tells us about how you the soul is going to be taken if you're a believer versus disbeliever or disobedient, how the grave is going to squeeze, and if the grave is going to be a pit from the hellfire or garden from Jannah, when you come in with the questioning of two angels, dreadful, scaring, and asking you the three questions, and when the person doesn't answer, he get hit with a hit that if animals hurt, it will die, and everything liveth, will, will die, and how deep you go, and all of those things, <coughs> I have no doubt it's true. I have no doubt it's there. But who is saying this? Non-Muslims? No, Muslims. Muslims, because the least they want to know about is death and the day of judgment. Because it ruins their happiness. You tell someone, talk about death. Oh, you're pessimistic. You always talk about death. You ruin it. Yeah, because you're enjoying your life here. So, أَكْثِرُوا مِنْ ذِكْرِ هَادِ that. Remember death, plenty because it straightens you. Prophet Muhammad when he tells you, visit the graveyard, and when he tells you, go with the funeral, and when he tells you, visit the sick, what's the point? He wants you to remember that you're going to be there. Prepare yourself and get ready. It's not there to go to cry and to grieve and to be sad. Yeah, that's natural to do that. But we want the lesson. Do you get a lesson when you do that? That is the thing that we need to focus on. So when you have problems, <laughs> don't rush to death because you don't know what you're gonna get there. It might be a lot worse. And when you die, you probably wish and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring you back to life. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Anbiya, حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتِ قَالَ رَبِّ ارْجِعُونَ لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِي مَا تَرَكْتِ would wish to come back. And how do you know you're a good doer? Well, you do good. How do you know it's accepted? You don't. Therefore, leave it to the one subhanahu wa ta'ala who knows and make sure you follow the command and follow the sunnah. And nowadays, brothers and sisters, giving too much glad tidings for people might not be the right choice. There has to be wisdom and hikmah how you talk to people. And when you talk about mercy and when you talk about punishment, because people are so far away from understanding the punishment and the grave and the day of judgment, relying totally on the mercy and doing nothing to even deserve it. And that's the scary part. Ibn Abbas has the wisdom when one person came and told him, is there repentance for someone who had killed someone and yeah, he never confessed and never got caught? And he just wanted to repent. He said, yes. Another person came and asked him. He said, no. And when he was asked, why didn't you tell him yes? And he said, no. And he said, because the second one, if I tell him yes, he would go and kill someone. I can see that in his eyes. He's angry. <laughs> see the wisdom? He's not changing the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's using, he's using wisdom in dealing with people. Khatibun nas ala qadri hukuli. The amr ramada, when the hunger struck the companions, Umar ibn Khattab عنه, did not establish the penalty on cutting the hand of the thieves. Why? Because everybody is starving, they need to eat. So he passed that penal code. Why? Because wisdom. You have to know how to deal with people, with good people. We always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to seek refuge or we always seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ham wal hazan wal aj wal kasal, laziness and being unable and worries and griefs and debt and to be overpowered by other people. These are constant dua that Prophet Muhammad used to do. So make sure you stick to that, stick to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger tells you, you would be relaxed and you would be safe, inshaAllah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأنا أتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. Yes sir. جزاك الله خير. Yes. The the initial portion of the